Hey, what's up everyone? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are already late April. May is just a couple of days away. So we are already in our spring and summer months. So I wanted to bring you guys my updated warm months EDC update guys. So a lot of my stuff doesn't change though. I do have a good amount of new gear that I'm testing or I kind of just wanted to upgrade. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. So longtime viewers know that I'm very stubborn and what works for me works for me. There's no need to change it. So a lot of the stuff is going to be familiar to you. And if that's the case, I'm going to skim right past it. Just be very brief about it because you've seen it in other videos, other, other EDC updates or reviews and the stuff that is new or upgraded, I will talk about a little bit more. So first things first, my hat, this Brixton hat you've seen for like five years already. I've had hundreds of adventures with it. I have a whole video devoted to it up here in the corner if you want the specifics. Of course, the hat provides you shelter. It's a micro shelter from the burning sun, from the winds, the snow, the rain. It protects you from glare when you're hunting or something like that. So I think a hat is just a necessity if you're going to go outside. And of course, mine on the side, I do have a Rovivon flashlight and a Yuko Stormproof match. So an extra source of illumination and ignition. I also have in some of the corners inside the band, some of the little tinder quicks. So in case I'm having trouble making fire, if I'm injured or whatever the case may be, I got a little cheat there. So once again, you've seen this hat many times, no need to talk about it any further. So throw that over there. Okay, with that being said, I got sunglasses. Now. I'm personally the kind of guy who feels that sunglasses make you look a little douchey. Um, but to be completely honest with you, I do have a lot of eye issues and I keep putting them off because I'm, I'm just dumb like that and it, it messes with me. So I do need to make it a habit to wear sunglasses, whether I like to wear them or not more often. So that's, I'm definitely making a, you know, a point to make it more because you know, your eyes are important without your eyes. Uh, <laughs> there goes a big part of your senses. So, Basic cheapy glasses. I got them in Colorado in a gas station when I was driving from down from over there down to Texas. Uh, Foster Grant. I don't know anything about brands of sunglasses. It was like 15 bucks at most. So a source of protection for my eyes. Once again, when it comes to glare and when you're driving and stuff like that. Notepad and pen. Once again, something you've seen many times in our EDC videos and adventures in general. This one's basically brand new, so there's really not a lot about it. I just replaced it like yesterday from, from my older one, but I'm always writing to-do lists, video ideas, sketches, uh, whatever, doodling on it, whatever the case may be. So I always have a notepad and a pen. I get a lot of use from this. I would say it's probably one of my most used and cherished EDC items, as untactical, as uncool as that may sound. So anyway, with that being said, my wrist, I do have a Timex Weekender. I've had this for a couple of years. You know, it just looks really handsome to carry a watch. It look really proper. And of course, you know, you always want to keep track of time. This one does have olive drab bands, nylon bands. So that's like my favorite color, the all out olive drab. So moving on down here, once again, you've seen my keys a hundred times. Nothing too exciting about it that you haven't seen before. Got a P38 can opener. I have a leather trinket that Corvo made for me after we hunted a rattlesnake one time, so he saved the shells from it. A little good luck charm. Rovivon carabiner right here. I do gotta replace the little blade that it comes with because I broke it. So yeah, normally there's like a hidden little blade here. Okay, moving on down to my pocket, I do have a new flashlight. Now, longtime viewers know that I love the Thru Night T1. It is my favorite flashlight of all time, and I still stand by that statement. However, mine is already five years old, and it is showing its age. It, it's showing, you know, the wear and tear, and if I charge it, even if I completely just remove it from the, from the wall outlet, and I place turbo, put the turbo button, it drops down nearly immediately. So I think just the battery is eating away, or just it's an old, I don't know. Whatever the case may be, I decided to try something new. So I do have this Olight Warrior Mini flashlight. It's definitely much larger than what I normally like to carry in terms of EDC, but it is an upgrade in terms of lumens. It's 1,700 lumens. Uh, I just received this, so be on the lookout in two, three months for a review. It has a magnetic tail cap, rechargeable. 
I mean, just an absolute awesome little light right here. It does have a striking bezel. So not only is it an EDC light, but it can double as a tactical light if I needed to defend myself. Not that a flashlight's my first choice of defense, but hey, better to have it and not need it, you know, in a sticky situation. So once again, a larger light than normal. In fact, right here in this tear is where the edge of my through night usually goes like this, but you can see that this one's much longer, but it's not that heavy. It's not too obtrusive. I, I think I just got to get used to it. I barely started carrying it a week ago. I think that's it in this pocket. Now for my coin pocket, a big lighter, of course, always have a source of ignition at all times. Nice and tucked away there. So once again, just like my hat, I have a source of ignition and illumination. Butt pocket over here, my 610 leather wallet. This was made by a longtime viewer, James Howard. Thank you so much, James. I've been wearing this going on three years and I love this wallet. Of course, I'm not gonna show my personal stuff, but nice and simple, nothing too crazy, but I love it. So very much appreciated, buddy. And uh, yeah, great stuff. Moving on over here to my butt pocket, I got of course a bandana. I can never leave home without a bandana. I mean, it's just as important as a fixed blade to me just because I always find myself needing them. So a thousand uses for a bandana uh, from making char cloth to you know, wiping your face to you know, uh, making an improvised container, whatever the case may be. This is a Shinerbach, <laughs> a Shinerbach bandana that I bought when I went to Shiner, Texas. I went to the distillery that makes the beer and um, I had a jolly old time there. So I did buy this and uh, yeah, I do like also the bright color. Normally I stay away from bright colors because I find them really obnoxious, like, like that highlighter color. But this golden color, I think it's bright enough without being too obtrusive in my opinion. So in case I did need to signal someone, you know, I think this would be pretty decent, at least better than my normal olive drab colored stuff. So there we go. Here, I just have my chapstick. And it sucks because recently I did have a clip on it from an old through night, a small through night. So a pocket clip like this that went on my chapstick and I was able to just pocket clip it like this and it would just stay there. But sadly, I lost it. And uh, yeah, so now it's back to dangling down in my pocket, which really annoys me, but what are you gonna do? Anyway, here is my fixed blade. You've seen this many times already. This is the Snake Eater. This is my personal design. I did get a new sheath for it though. If you can notice it, it's no longer the, the stock JR, JNR, JRE sheath that it usually comes with. This was from a company from a knife called a Brisa Nesmuk, something like that. And I can care less about the knife itself, but I loved the shape, the contours of the sheath because it complements my blade very much where it's thin and then it flares out towards the end. It complements it very well. Really good stuff. I did wet form it so it's just tighter for my knife so it doesn't fall off. And of course, you've seen my snake eater, my design many times. I have a review on it up here in the corner if you do wanna check it out, more details on it. With the multi-grind, AEBL steel, 90 degree spine, 330 seconds inch thin blade an absolute beauty. So check out that review if you want more information. Link down below to Wood Steel Knives if you want to reach out to the maker, Woody Smith. Okay, and now moving down to my boots. Now you guys know that I carry a boot knife. I am rocking my older Justin boots. Uh, these last couple years I have been using another pair called Moonshine Spirits. However, they have holes at the bottom of the sole. So whenever I step on something wet like a puddle, I can feel my sock immediately getting soaked or when I'm walking, I, I can feel pebbles getting in there or stickers. So I do gotta go take them to get resold. So I'm wearing my old ones. Now for my boot knife, here is my Exodus Adventure Craft little blade right here. I do have a review on this one as well. Now keep in mind, this is the original version before Jacob took his design to White River Knives. So it's a little bit of a not as fancy as they are nowadays. This is 1084 high carbon steel with the black coating, 90 degree spine, my card of scales. I have a whole review on it over here in the corner if you want to check it out. Once again, keep in mind this is the older rendition. It's a little bit different now. 
in terms of materials and maker. I also recently made a video specifically on boot knives and what I look for, so check that out in the corner as well. That one's doing outstanding. It's like over 20,000 views in a matter of days, so uh, I'm really proud of that, that that one's getting a lot of attention. Look at that, that nice little snap. It's so satisfying with the Kydex sheath right here. So I always have a tucked away blade if I need it. As for my other boot, I only do this with this pair of Justin boots, but I do have paracord wrapped around the pulling loops, the, the ears. So I would say it's probably about 20, 25 feet of cordage at most, but you know, it's not the most, but I can set up a small shelter if need be. And I always have cordage on my person. Once again, it's not heavy, it's not obtrusive. I just lower my jeans and I forget it's there but my boots always have some cordage and a cutting tool. Well, that's about it on what I'm carrying on my person. Now let's move down to what I normally do carry in terms of a haversack and a canteen. So you already know that every single time I leave home, even if it's just for a 15 minute errand, I always fill up my canteen with water because I don't want to be a chump and be wasteful spending $3 at the gas station for water. And it gets very hot down here in the Southwest. So, you know, you're being dehydrated constantly, whether you're out doing wilderness stuff or you're just out in, you know, in traffic and stuff. So every time I leave home, I bring this Nalgene water container with me. It's a canteen. Um, and yeah, always have water. In fact, look at that. I'm almost out of it. And we're not even doing anything too, you know, labor intensive right now. So yeah, always carry your water with you. Now this right here, is the Tough Possum Gear Shackleton EDC Satchel. I've been carrying this haversack for two years almost, and I love this thing. It's just outstanding. I have a full review if you're interested in that up here in the corner. And now let's talk about the side pockets because both have been upgraded. So over here on the side, I did recently upgrade my folding saw. So it's the first time I try out a silky Gomboy Outback folding saw. In the nine years that I've been doing outdoors things, I've never replaced my saw. I bought a Baco back in like 2014 and I've never replaced it. I've replaced my knife countless times. I even have two hatchets, but I've never replaced my Baco. And to be completely honest with you, it's still going strong, but I don't feel like it, that's, it's not as sharp as it used to be. So I definitely was overdue for trying out a new saw. So check out this beauty right here. I love the handle. It's this wooden composite material. I'm sure it's recycled, made in Japan. And look at the size of this saw. So it's definitely an upgrade. I did bring Old Faithful over here just so I can compare them. And look at that. So definitely looking like this is gonna be an upgrade. I hope so, because it was like $70, so it better be worth it. Um, once again, the Baco's still going strong. I'll put this in a separate haversack or a pack, but I did wanna just upgrade my folding saw to something a little bit more stronger. So yeah, good stuff right here. Let's put this away. And now let's move on to this side. And this side, I do have a Phoenix light that doubles as an electronics charger. Now it does have this little lanyard. I did connect it to this buckle right here. So in case a branch pulls it off or whatever, I don't lose it. So just a little safety feature I just improvised. And this is the Phoenix ECP. Once again, it is a flashlight. It can go as strong as a thousand lumens, but at the same time, it can charge your electronics, such as your flashlight, your phone, whatever the case may be, your lantern back here. Now I will say it's not the strongest of portable chargers, guys. I mean, if I charge my phone from like 10% with this thing, it'll go up to like 85 and that's where it dies out. So it's not too powerful in terms of that. But once again, it's because it's pulling double duty. It's not only going to charge your stuff, but it doubles as a backup flashlight. So in case the one on my person is damaged or lost or, need, you know, whatever the case may be, it's dry. Of course, I still have a little mini backup in my hat. But at the same time, I have this one for something, you know, Never hurts to have multiple ones, especially if you're going to be camping with multiple people. And, you know, a lot of our friends aren't into EDC, so if they need to borrow a light, they can use one of these. So let me place this back. 
once again, I use this little lanyard and I put it over here. And that way I don't have to worry about a branch knocking this out of my bag and then I lost it. Okay, so let's open this baby right up. Now here's another knife that I am gonna be testing. In fact, I've been actually using this knife going on four years already. So I feel really bad because I haven't reviewed it yet, but I will have the review in a couple of weeks. This is the LaRocca Kumpani Bushcraft Knife right here. Made by the highly talented Paul LaRocca. You gotta check out his blades. He just, outstanding work. And once again, he sent this to me four years ago to make a video to test it and make a review. And sadly, I haven't made the review. Not by any fault of the blade itself. The blade is outstanding. But what I have planned for the review, it just get it, it kept getting pushed back and back and back. But finally, we're going to be going to Utah in about three weeks from now. And this baby is going to have its moment to shine. So, yeah, really great blade. One eighth inch thick. Scandivex edge right there. I believe this is CPM4 steel. I'll annotate it below if I am mistaken. And micarta scales. And it originally came with a JRE Industries sheath. I did give it away to a friend of mine that needed a sheath for his blade. So what I'm using for this one is the Mora Garberg leather sheath and it fits in there just fine. So I will be taking this one with me to doing some bushcraft adventures in Utah pretty soon. Now, one tigress poncho right here. You've seen this before. It can double as a tarp if I needed to improvise a small quick shelter. Or once again, if it's raining, I could just put it over myself so I don't get wet or I get my haversack wet. And I also use it as a pillow sometimes when, you know, uh, you know, when I'm out camping, whatever the case may be. So you've seen this many times. Here's another item. This is the Infiray thermal camera. You'll see this in a review in a couple of weeks. You've seen this in past camping videos. You've seen me filming at nighttime, whether I film myself, I film Cuervo, or I'm doing something like fishing in the middle of the night. This just attaches to your iPhone and you're able to do all kinds of different predator visions, you know, so on a, on a low light situation, middle of the night, you know, you, you need to look out for danger, whether I'm out stealth camping or I'm out hunting. It'll uh, help me locate prey. So really cool stuff coming soon. Of course, my little metal container here, if I need to boil water to make some coffee, make some ramen noodles, whatever the case may be. And of course, it's compatible with my Nalgene bottle. Now down here, another extra bandana. Once again, you could just never have enough bandanas. They're just used all the time, moving a hot, hot container from the fire or whatever the case may be. So I always like to have a backup bandana. And of course the top to my canteen, my canteen cup, in case I'm, you know, I'm covering it to boil something, hard boiled eggs or whatever the case may be. And then a, a hank of paracord. I would say this is probably about 20 feet at most, 15, 20 feet. Not much, but once again, keep in mind, I do have some more on my boot. I just don't want a whole big chunk of it if I'm not using it that often. So, you know, we're in the desert, guys. We're not surrounded by trees, so we don't use this as much as other people when setting up shelters and stuff. We usually use tents. And now check out this wall right here with Molly webbing. And I like to hang things on there. So, of course, right here on the side, you see this clipper lighter, a backup form of ignition. Big thank you to longtime viewer James Hyde for sending this to me. I love me a clipper lighter. And I love the bright color of this. It's this bright red, so I can see it easily in here. And it fits in beautifully right there. I don't have to worry about it falling over or anything like that. But it's also not difficult to remove if I need to access it quickly. I also have a 6-inch ferro rod. This was a Christmas gift made for me by my buddy Palu Hiker MD, Ernie. Check out his YouTube channel. This is his logo. Thanks so much, buddy. I get a lot of use from this. I've been using this for several years already. And once again, it just goes in the loops and there you go. Next is my Yuko Spork here. You've seen it many times. I have a spoon, 
there's a fork on the other side. So anytime I'm eating, boom, I always have my eating utensil there. And then right here, I have a little loop here. My buddy Father Nomad from Instagram, he 3D printed this glow-in-the-dark lantern. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it'll glow at night. So in a dark setting, like inside my tent or whatever. So I think that's really neat. I just have it hanging there. So two forms of ignition, an eating utensil. I, I see a lot of people constantly forgetting their eating utensil. And um, let's talk about the two pockets over here on this side right there. So this is more like my personal stuff or my everyday stuff, not necessarily survival, but uh, just everyday things, you know, when I'm at work or whatever. I have some Altoids because I'm always drinking coffee and the bitter taste, the aftertaste of coffee grosses me out and I don't want to have bad breath around pretty girls. If you're a guy, I don't care. <laughs> but around pretty girls, I don't want to have bad breath. So I always have some Altoids. I have clear eyes because I have constantly dry eyes, dry itchy eyes that hurt or they're blurry or whatever. So um, I, once again, I got to start taking care of my eyes more. And since I rarely wear sunglasses in a very bright environments, uh, I always pay the price for it. So I do have to make a habit of always carrying eye drops on me. iPhone earphones, you know, in case I want to listen to something, listen to some music at some point when I'm, you know, going on a hike or a jog, I'm going to the gym, you know, whatever, listen to a YouTube video. I have that. And then I have this little cable that came from one of my through night lanterns. And what I love about it is that there's three cables on it. So instead of having to carry three different cables, this one has all three. I have a USB, USB-C, and a lightning cable for my phone. So I connect this to this Phoenix charger and whether I'm trying to charge my phone, my lantern, my flashlight, it doesn't matter. I have whatever cable I need with that. So I really love this cable. Saves a whole lot of space instead of having so many different cables just tangled up in here. And then for this last pocket over here in the corner, I do have a Victorinox honing rod for my blades when I'm out in the field hone them up before I start chopping up some food, whatever the case may be. And lastly, my multi-tool, and this is the Leatherman Blast. I love this multi-tool. Sadly, Leatherman no longer makes this model, which is foolish on their part. I love that this is just that Goldilocks zone. It's a large enough multi-tool to be formidable, but at the same time, it's not overly heavy. It's not overly bulky with a ton of tools that I don't use. So I use this one a lot, not only in the city or around, or around the house, but at the same time when I'm out fishing. So I do have, of course, my pliers here, wire cutters, and all these tools right here are locking. So I have a saw, can opener, slash bottle opener, Phillips screwdriver, small pair of scissors right here once again all these guys are locking so just click the back there you go on the other side I have a secondary saw the only item that I don't use here is uh, I bought the second hand off someone I don't know what came here in this little circle right there I think it probably was like an eyeglasses adjustment, like a little mini screwdriver or something. I don't have it. Once again, this is a secondhand item I bought off someone on eBay. Flathead screwdriver. And of course, a backup knife. Long-time viewers are going to see that there's a lot of stuff here that hasn't changed. Like I said, I'm very stubborn, and when something works for me and I love it, there's no need for me to change it for the sake of changing it. And then there's always room for some stuff to be changed out as well. So, of course, you're going to see my snake eater, my haversack, these things I've had for a long time, my hat. But at the same time, there are stuff that could be upgraded or is just starting to fail, so I do need to replace it. So, truth be told, uh, some stuff was sent to me, like the Phoenix Light the Olight, the Paul LaRocca knife. But at the same time, some stuff I did fork out the money myself so I can upgrade it, such as the Silky Gomboy. I'm very excited to test this out pretty soon. And I would like to say that I do think my EDC is very well balanced. I'm not carrying too much, but at the same time, I got my cutting tools, multi-tools, cordage, cover, container, combustion, and even room for some luxuries such as mints, 
eye drops, headphones, that kind of stuff. So that's about it for us, folks. Thank you for watching. Give this video a like if you did enjoy it. Also, big thank you to our sponsor of this video, which is ourselves. So be sure to click the link down below to our merch store if you're so inclined to purchase Junkyard Fox or Cuerpo Negro merch. Not only are these designs really awesome in a cup, a mug, sticker, shirts, but at the same time, all the proceeds that go from selling our merch is going to an upcoming trip to Utah so we can do some primitive camping and film some really awesome stuff over there. So once again, link is down below to our merch store. And thank you so much for all your support. And that's about it for us, folks. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Now go outside and get your boots dirty. Thank you.